Welcome to the Heart of a Viking. These are art projects taught by the elementary art teachers from the Cape Henlopen School District in Delaware. We hope you have fun, create imaginative works of art, and make sure you share them with someone because after all, visual arts are meant to be seen. Good day, mates! Mama Roo, Baby Roo, and me, Mrs. Minto, are coming back at you today to talk a little bit more about Australia. Did you know that in the world there are seven continents and Australia is one of them? A continent is defined as a continuous landmass. Due to its large size and isolation from the rest of the world, Australia is known as an island continent. While Australia is all alone out in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, it's bigger than you think. It's actually almost the same size as the mainland US. But 90% of the continent is covered in vegetation. That means that most of Australia has wild plants and trees and bushes and flowers growing across it. That includes the Australian wildflower. Let's learn a little bit, a bit more about this beautiful yellow flower. The golden wattle is Australia's national flower. The golden wattle blooms in spring, which begins in September in Australia. It has large, fluffy, yellow, sweet-smelling flower heads. Each golden wattle flower head is a bunch of many tiny flowers. The golden wattle is featured predominantly on the Australian coat of arms. The first day of September is National Wattle Day. It builds on a long, unofficial tradition of wearing the wattle blossom on September 1st. The day was introduced in 1913 by an association called the Wattle Day League and formally recognized on June 23, 1992. Australians can celebrate their floral heritage each Wattle Day by planting wattles. When it's in flower, the golden wattle displays the national colors of Australia, which are green and gold. As one species of plant that grows across Australia, the golden wattle is a symbol of unity. The wattle is ideally suited to withstand Australia's droughts, winds, and brush fires. The resilience of the wattle represents the spirit of the Australian people. Alrighty, Cape Artists, I am so excited for today's project. I think it's going to be beautiful when you're all done. I really feel that this will be one that hangs somewhere in your house so that everyone can see it and you can even teach them a little bit about the wildflower too. All right, so for today's project, we need some unique things. So the first thing that we need is some grass or some leaves. So go outside, um, take a minute, take some scissors out with you, and you need some long pieces of grass. These are like perfect. These are nice and long pieces of grass. Find some that is sticking up higher than all the other pieces and trim them down as low as you can. So you need some different kinds of grasses. You need some kind of glue, doesn't matter which one. I think I'm gonna use my white glue today, but you could use a glue stick. It would work just fine as well. You're going to need a pencil, but not for drawing. We're actually gonna be using the eraser end to help us make our wattle flowers. And some scissors possibly, or you don't actually need these. You could just tear the paper that we're using to Today, but scissors if you want them and then we need some yellow papers the yellow is going to become our water flowers so we need something that's yellow and we can kind of tear it up so this is something called crepe paper I often use this when I'm decorating for birthday parties or any kinds of parties it comes on a big roll like this this is called tissue paper tissue paper is a type of paper that you might put in someone's gift so if you were getting a gift or giving a gift then you would put some of this paper in the gift as a you know to decorate it and wrap it up and then this is just construction paper so it's just regular old yellow construction paper any of those are going to be good um, or you can use a little bit of all of them I'll probably use a little bit of all of them I also today I'm going to need a blue piece of paper my blue piece of paper is actually going to be my background if you don't have a blue paper a white one will do just fine I like the blue because it reminds me of the blue sky and Australia just looks so beautiful so that blue sky is definitely what I want behind my wattle plants so a blue piece of paper would be perfect and then finally if you want if you have an art area at your house it has some extra cool supplies anything else that you can find that 
Vanity Yellow would be handy. I'm using my A carton here as a sorter. So I use these guys a lot to sort different things. So I have some different kinds of pom-poms. I might use some of these. Here's a different style of pom-pom. These are little yellow sequins. And these are little pieces of foam paper. So they have like a little sticker on the back. So they would be good for our project today too. And anything else you have yellow as well. So gather up your supplies. Meet me back here in just a few moments with all the things that you need so that we can get started. Alrighty, Cape Artists. So to get started with our waddle piece of artwork today, we need our blue background paper or white if you didn't have blue. We need to start with our Elmer's glue and some of those pieces of grass that we gathered from outside. So I'm going to get started by just placing some of these grasses where I think they might look nice. Okay, so now that they're placed, I have to remember they're not grass any longer. Now they are wattle bush branches. So I need to consider a couple of things as I place my wattle bush branches. I need to decide if they are balanced. That means that I've put a little bit on this side and a little bit on that side. Think about it like a seesaw. If you put a much bigger person on one side and a very light person on the other side, the seesaw wouldn't be balanced. Same thing with artwork. You wanna make sure you have big pieces and little pieces over here and big pieces and little pieces over there. Now, I'm gonna be using my white glue today to help me to glue these down. Now remember, we're gluing grass to paper. The grass sometimes doesn't want to glue to the paper. Um, this is an experiment. We'll have to see how things go. Hopefully it'll go pretty well. When you're using your white glue, you want to squeeze it gently so that you don't end up with a ton of glue on your paper. And when you're holding down these grasses, you might have to hold them a little longer than you would have to hold like other pieces of paper that you might be gluing down. So, you know, this is grass on paper. You might have to hold it a little bit longer. All right, once you finish, then you need to decide if you have enough or if you'd like to have more. I like to imagine this project as if I'm in one of the wattle bushes hiding and I'm peeking out and there's all of these little branches all around me. So I think I actually would like to add a few more of the small pieces. So I'm gonna get a little handful in my hand and I'm going to make just a couple of lines of glue and then press them into those lines. Okay, I think that looks great for my wattle branches. The next thing I'm going to add are my yellow flowers. So remember I had a few different choices. I'm gonna start for my yellow flowers with my cray paper. So I can either tear this with my hands, which you know gives kind of a raggedy edge, or you could use your scissors to cut little pieces off as well. You want pieces to be either as big as your thumb or half the size of your thumb. Hey, there's a little bit of math sneaking into art today. So this one's about as tall as my thumb. This one, if I want it to be half the size of my thumb, I'm going to put it down here and cut it at the bottom. Excellent. So either of those sizes will work perfectly. Now I need my pencil that I had. 
You're not gonna believe this. I just spent about 30 seconds looking for my pencil and it was tucked behind my ear. I know, super silly. Okay, so I have my pencil and my little piece of tissue paper. I'm going to take the eraser end, stick it right there in the middle. It's almost like the um, pencil is growing up out of the piece of tissue paper. And then scrunch it all around. You can wrinkle it as much as you want. You just wanna be careful not to tear it. So wrinkle it up and then pinch it and hold it on there just like that. I'm gonna switch hands though. Because now I'm gonna take my white glue, find a spot where I think a yellow flower might grow, somewhere next to one of the branches, put a little circle of white glue and tap that on. Then hold the tissue paper down as you carefully lift off the pencil so that the flower stays there. All right, so that was the cray paper. Next, I'm going to try some of my tissue paper. So remember my tissue paper was the type of paper that you could use to wrap a gift for somebody. So I'm going to go ahead and cut myself off a little piece of the tissue paper. Okay, so now I have to look at my piece of artwork and look for balance again. Every time I put on my yellow pieces, I'm constantly checking to see if I'm working on both sides equally. Right now it's looking pretty balanced. So I'm going to switch over to my next type of paper, which was the construction paper. Now this is a little harder to work with. This paper is thicker and harder because it's construction paper. So I really have to get both hands in there to scrunch and hold that to make the little flower shape. And I might have to hold it a little bit longer as I press down with the eraser into the glue puddle. Wow, this really is looking beautiful. So now I'm gonna pause. I've used all the different styles of paper that I have, the hard construction paper, the cray paper, and the tissue paper, and pause and ask myself, do I wanna add some more of any of those style of flowers? They really do look pretty. I think I do wanna add a little bit more of the tissue paper flowers. All right, I think that looks beautiful. Again, checking for balance, looks really good. A lot of yellow over here, a lot of yellow over here, lots of green. I could even add more grass at this point if I wanted to, but I think I'm gonna let it be. Okay, so now's the time where if you had gathered some of the extra fun supplies, maybe you found some other yellow things in your art area, um, then now is the time to add those extra things. So I'm before I glue mine down, I'm just gonna see what they're going to look like. Thank you. 
Okay, so I really don't like the sequins. I was hoping I would. They are pretty, but I don't think I like them because they're mine are kind of transparent and they were looking kind of green on my blue paper because yellow and blue mixed together make green. But I do like the pom-poms and the little pieces of uh, foam paper. So these are actually stickers. I just need to take off the white side and stick those guys on there. And then my pom-poms just require a little tap of glue as well. All right, and there we have it. That is our finished piece of artwork. That is our waddle flowers from Australia. I hope you enjoyed this. I think it's beautiful. Have fun with colors and find lots of different yellow textures. Remember, texture is how something feels. So see if you can find some different yellow textures to make your flowers out of. Have fun on that nature hunt looking for your um, grasses, which actually become our waddle branches, right? But have fun with all of that. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you back here tomorrow at the heart of a Viking.